Okay, welcome, okay. Alistair okay. and Wayne. Good morning, Madam Chair. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> Lovely to be here. Um, it's the usual finance and conference meeting. Yes, I'm glad <coughs> you're all in a good mood before we get on to the non-contentious matter of an RAFA review. Um, <laughs> I'll just um, quickly um, run you through where we are in the, the process of the review. <coughs> Um, you'll recall that we, um, the governing body, adopted the terms of reference um, for the review back in the um, <coughs> And those terms of reference um, identified some um, issues with uh, the current um, funding model. So the purpose of the review is um, just to review the, the current funding mechanism um, in the context of Auckland Council's um, new legislative context and also to consider whether the, um, the funding me mechanism remains fit for purpose. Now, <coughs> just to let you know where this report fits into the process, um, as I said, we've adopted the terms of reference which um, outline the issues for the current model. Um, the, this committee has previously adopted some um, evaluation criteria to help assess um, any potential um, new funding models to see whether they address those issues. And the report before you today um, sets out um, for endorsement some options that have been worked up to help address the issues that were identified in the terms of reference. So um, the purpose of today's report is to get endorsement from this committee uh, to continue working on the options that have been developed <coughs> and to evaluate those options against the criteria which have already been agreed so that we can come back to you um, in August um, with a preferred uh, or a recommended option or um, for the RAFA review. So I guess it's, it's worth um, stressing at the beginning of this that we're not advocating for any of the options um, that are in this report at this stage. They are a collection of ideas um, that have been discussed to try to address the issues that um, have been identified and the evaluation will help decide whether in fact they're good ideas or not. So the different options that um, we've worked up and are contained in the report, uh, the first one is just the status quo, which um, as it is, the 10 um, specified regional amenities make annual funding ap applications to the funding board it's the funding board's role to assess those funding applications, prepare a funding plan, put that out for public consultation. Um, then Auckland Council gets to make a submission on that. Um, the funding board considers all the public feedback and then recommends to council a proposed levy um, that we would we pay to the funding board and they distribute to the amenities. Um, so that's. That's the current model, and um, that is an option that we simply continue with that. Now, the next three options are just um, enhancements of that status quo model that we have. Uh, the first one, um, the current legislation um, prohibits the funding board um, paying out any money to any of the regional amenities for capital expenditure. Now, some of the amenities are capital intensive organisations um, and some of them like to do a recent example I guess is the Auckland Theatre Company although it wasn't the actual theatre company that was doing the development of the waterfront theatre but there was a need for a large uh, capital contribution um, to assist one of the amenities. So um, with the, the current explicit exclusion <coughs> of um, capital payments um, one model could be rather than council making uh, capital contributions by way of exception that um, it's anticipated that uh, council would contribute although this would need to be um, well signalled and well planned and council would need to be heavily involved in, in <coughs> the business cases and due diligence of any capital requirements. Um, the third option here which we've um, called the sustainable funding option. The current act is premised on providing uh, sustainable, secure um, funding for the amenities. Um, we think there's scope to um, uh, further define and refine what is sustainable funding for each of the amenities. 
Now that will require um, a higher degree of um, median turn planning um, to be shared by the amenities um, with the funding board and also with Auckland Council. Um, we could also work in this model, the idea of a, um, a three year rolling funding cycle so that um, aligned with our LTP processes that the amenities could um, give a very good indication of what their funding requirements would be over a three year period um, and they could be agreed in principle by the funding board. So the funding for year one, if you like, is locked in and there's a very strong indication of what it will be in years two and three um, and any departure from that would be by exception. Um, and then the, the funding would be reset every three years as per our LTP process. <coughs> The fourth option is again uh, just a variation on the status quo. Um, it again incorporates the three year rolling um, funding cycle, um, but it would require Auckland Council to be far more um, explicit <coughs> about its expectations, both around its funding constraints um, and any alignment of the activities of um, the amenities to um, the goals and outcomes of, uh, that Auckland Council is trying to achieve. Um, particular considerations could be put in place for the different groupings of the amenities. You know, broadly speaking, these could be categorised into safety organisation, safety and emergency. You could have arts and culture um, um, amenities and, and amenities that more provide facilities for Auckland. So Auckland Council could um, help develop more particular criteria and considerations for each of these groupings which would help determine metrics um, when <coughs> assessing what is sustainable funding for these groups. Um, the fifth option that we've included in the report is hopefully fairly self-explanatory that um, on a three yearly basis um, the baseline funding for each of the amenities um, is determined and then is simply adjusted with a CPI adjuster for the next two years and then it's reset um, again for another three year period. Um, the sixth option which we've called um, strong funder would be a fairly significant change um, from the current regime and re would require um, amendment to the legislation um, as with the previous option. Essentially um, the role of the funding board under this option would um, change from being a decision maker to one of providing uh, independent expert advice to Auckland Council. Uh, the amenities would apply directly to Auckland Council for funding, so there would be that direct relationship between um, yourselves as a funder and the amenities, um, and it would be up to Council to set um, the funding envelope for the amenities and, and prepare the funding plan um, with advice from the funding board. Um, the final option um, that we've included there would require, um, in fact, repeal of the legislation, not simply an amendment of it. Um, Auckland Council would um, put aside a dedicated fund to fund the amenities, a separate policy and um, guidelines to be put around um, the funding to be provided to each um, of the amenities. Uh, now that it's just a quick summary of the um, seven options that are included in the paper and that we've previously workshopped. If we just look at um, them on the spectrum, which is in included in the report and on the big screen, um, from a sort of legislative um, impact point of view, obviously the status quo um, requires no change. Um, the next three options, uh, we believe at this stage, um, uh, could happen within the current legislative framework. Um, options five and six would require amendment to the um, legislation and option seven would be repealing the legislation. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this, today we are seeking the committee's endorsement to continue uh, work on these options and to evaluate them so that we can come back to you with a, a recommended option in August. Um, uh, once we get your endorsement, hopefully, um, we have a workshop planned with representatives um, from the amenities 
tomorrow and we'll be um, reporting back to you in August. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Alistair. And I recognise um, sitting at the back a couple of people from the amenities, so welcome. Um, Councillor Brewer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> Alistair, I suppose I just want to explore the merits of um, uh, uh, work being done on um, options five, six and seven, given that five and six are dependent on a legislative amendment and seven is wholly dependent on a repeal of the legislation. Um, I suppose I just want to get a sense as to the openness uh, of Parliament um, uh, to, to giving this priority in the next year or two. Um, I know in the past that the ACT Party, for example, have been supportive of this legislation. It was a, it was a Labor, previous Labor government that supported it. <coughs> and they put it in place, uh, Helen Clark and Judith Tizard. And I just wonder if, if we do all this work, uh, is there an intent for it to go up the order paper? And is there also a willingness by the national government to, um, uh, to repeal it? I wouldn't presume to um, even pretend to know what the National Party's intentions would be. Um, we have had very preliminary discussions with the um, Ministry of Culture and Heritage. We've touched base with them no more. Um, I guess it's our role under the terms of reference is to come up with a preferred option. Uh, the implementation of that option, um, we haven't looked into that. Um, I, I would not want to hazard a guess as to whether it's a priority for Parliament, but if that was a preferred option, then we would have to start working with, with central government on how to do that. <coughs> so, um, I suppose we're, you know, there's, uh, we're ticking uh, for our officials to go away and do these options. Some are within the legislative framework and some are, uh, are dependent on a legislative amendment or a wholesale repeal, and I just think it would be prudent whether even an informal kind of temperature check, Madam Chair, if anyone's able to advise us as to the willingness uh, <clears throat> at a political level as to whether um, Parliament is, is, is ready and willing to, if we front up with our option six, five, six or seven, whether they are realistically willing to work with us um, in, in the repealing potentially of this legislation. I think that's probably what comes into the evaluate of the options. I mean, if we... If we do that preliminary, Councillor Brewer, and we find out there's no I, yeah. that would type be, for it, yeah. we, so that would come under, under the um, evaluation. Yeah, yeah, I certainly think that's important to assess. Any other questions? I'm Councillor Darby. Yeah, I thank Councillor Brewer for asking that question, because I think that's quite a fundamental question, and, and I look at the recommendations and I reflect on the the workshop that we had on this and what I heard around that workshop table, admittedly, Madam Chair, before you're criticised, it's not a decision-making <laughs> workshop, uh, but I did hear um, political feedback um, that was weary of entering into the domain of having to review the legislation and have the government participate uh, unnecessarily. So I'm, <coughs> I guess I'm leading to a question there. Is, is Considering the appetite of the workshop, and let's hear from other councillors here today and IMSB members, um, but is, is there maybe um, a quicker course here in reviewing the ARAFA funding model to uh, undertake the evaluation on the first four options, considering the complexity that kicks in when, and the delays that would kick in, um, if we start to take into account five, six, and seven. Madam Chair, I'm saying that because really, other than a couple of rotor blades falling off and becoming quite threatening, um, things have been pretty good. So I, I'm of a mind to uh, be absolutely convinced that we should go past evaluating options one to four. Okay. So I just a quick, there's a question in there, of course. Yes, yes. Um, so, Alistair, you know, if you actually, you, you'd probably be quite happy to have less rather than more, but what, would you like to make a comment about that? Um, I think the question of uh, 
how many of the options to proceed with is fundamentally a political one. Um, obviously, it would be easier for us to do this. Um, from a policy perspective, doing um, a review of the whole spectrum um, would provide a, a better picture of, um, of what is the preferred option. Um, and I guess the process that we're envisaging is um, anchoring everything back to its relative um, benefits or, or um, disadvantages as compared to the status quo. So we're always looking at how, how an option would, would differ from that status quo option. Um, Wayne, do you want to add anything? I I'm not sure if I clarified anything there at all. Um, uh, through the chair, uh, the range of options was just a, a, the set of ideas across the spectrum of what might be possible. The focus really was to identify a range of options that would address the issues and the objectives that were identified in the terms of reference. Um, as Alistair had indicated, the main focus was the differences between options and the extent to which they might address those issues or objectives or not um, as a platform to provide uh, advice to the council. Um, in giving that advice, it was also identified that the um, <coughs> implementation that might be required would need to be fully uh, uh, examined <coughs> and the advice given, um, and that would particularly include what might be involved in securing um, legislative change. Um, as we understand it, it's a private member's bill and um, it's quite a process that would be involved. Thank you. Councillor Casey. Oh, just be very wary of talking about an appetite that anybody might um, divine from a workshop. Um, <laughs> Told you. <laughs> I, I, I personally would like to see all the options explored, especially in the last three. And I expressed that at the workshop, so I'm not sure whose appetite you were reflecting, yeah. Councillor. So, yes, um, one to seven, thanks very much, and keep going. Okay, any other questions or comments? Well, sorry, comment. um, um, I like the rotor well, I think these, uh, nice. these um, organisations that are part of this, um, this funding regime certainly enjoy a pretty <coughs> privileged position. And uh, in this day of austerity with Auckland Council, I go around, I don't know if other councils do, and talk to community groups, and uh, they're getting their uh, allocations cut back. It's pretty austere out there at the moment. So um, I don't think that I would be supportive of, I'm, I'm not supportive of opening the floodgates and, and every, all these options being explored because it'll um, create an expectation that I've just got a real concern about. Um, you know, these groups, I think uh, they're doing fairly well out of the council from where they came from. They're pretty much Auckland, old Auckland city accent, uh, centric and um, I think they've done exceedingly well out of this legislation at the expense of a lot of other groups out in the community, Councillor Brewer. Well, as long so, as um, North Shore pay I, uh, their way. I, 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 actually, I think we could just about um, curb this without going through this huge process, but I, I agree that those, those last three, <laughs> we were going back for legislative change, um, and Councillor Brewer, the Labour Party did promote this, with Judith Tizard, and, but the uh, National Party came in, I think they were completely behind it, uh, to uh, the uh, outlying areas kind of That's uh, right. interested uh, yeah. observations. So um, I'm, I'm not supportive of all those. I don't know if, if that's going to be ever going to be in there, I'm going to vote against it, thanks. And I think other councillors should, because, you know, as Councillor Brewer says, it's... Um, not helpful to give expectations that aren't <coughs> going to probably ever get to anywhere. Thank you. Member Tamahiri. Yeah, Madam Chair, I think that's the, um, the sweet, the, the sweet of... You were in Parliament at that time. Yeah, well, hey, we, we all make mistakes. Anyway, yeah. the thing is... Uh, <laughs> it was Tizard and Tamahiri. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I joined at the hip. Nice um, bus stop yesterday. If, if I may. Uh, anyway, um, I think I think the suite of, of the stream of work is uh, very good, and, and we'll, we'll end up with some good results. So that's that's a good thing. Um, the second uh, the second observation is um, along the lines of uh, of Councillor Wood here. Um, it, we operate in a vacuum in regard to these sorts of discussions because we've just come into the game quite late, and, and plan I'm talking about a Māori voice, and so. Um, we were looking at one of your streams of work, if you could enhance it uh, by having a look at the opportunity to top slice all our good friends and colleagues. Um, 
in, in regard to their funding model by placing um, at least a conversation in place about a Māori performing arts opportunity uh, for the city. Okay, so when you do report back on, on that, could you just take a note of that? Be grateful for that. Thank you. Right, thank you.